smells like burnt flesh in here. Now here's somebody special. The Absolute has touched you, hasn't she? Priestess Gut needs to touch you too. Hold out your arm so I can mark your flesh. That's a bigger fight than we needed to pick. Not the subtlest of assassins, are you? You think you can hurt me? This'll be good. Let's rip him apart! choice but to keep going. for this. Important is ever easy. position.
Most would think us mad for wandering right into the middle of a goblin war clan. I suppose that goes to demonstrate just how desperate we are. I'm exhausted. Better find somewhere to camp soon. the jingle of coin I hear? You've timed it well, my friend. Already turned quite the profit today, so I'm feeling generous. You recognize the crest she bears, the winged serpent of the Zentarim. Half right, sharp eyes. A Zen is a normal trader, just a matter of what's for sale. Weapons and other exotic goods, true enough. But most of all, we offer discretion. No judgment, no right and wrong, just good deals and bad. That problem for you?
pleasure. Tempers are rising. It's clear not everything you find is at your disposal. wandered into a forbidden area. You sense it might be time to leave. to convince them of is that you absolutely do not belong here. You've been caught trespassing again. Turn someone inside out. Ready or not. Yes.
Fuck yes. Everything, despite everything. Let's have a look at myself. suspicious while it's watching. The village to the east. It's abandoned. Looks that way. But scouts said they heard something moving around out there. Something big. It's not our concern. Our prey is elsewhere. How many raiders do we have? Plenty of lashes, loads of hunters, and a few pariahs to carry the powder kegs. These pariahs, they're prepared to fight for the Absolute? What they do ain't exactly fighting. All they gotta do is light up the powder and burn. Then they're prepared to die for the Absolute. Good. Your scouting party has not returned, and half of the intruders escaped your guards. Sorry, mistress. We mucked up. Until their sanctuary is found, I will take something precious from you every hour that passes. A trinket, a tongue, a limb. I ain't no use without my limbs. The lads will make the prisoner squeal soon enough. I swear. Silence now, creature. Or I will silence you forever. As she turns to you, her thoughts mingle with yours. 
a cold hand caressing your brain. The chamber melts away to reveal a dark, endless nowhere. In it, you see a vision. The drow listens as a pale-eyed young woman whispers in her ear. One of those the voice spoke of. One of the chosen. The vision fades away. A true soul in such a grotesque form. The Absolute has a place in her heart even for death here. Her heart is more generous than mine. Join my hunt, fairy, and obey me. You would dare! Guards, to me!
True souls have their limits.
my good fellow. Quite the cosy setup you have here. I'll just make myself comfortable. Thank you so much. I was just settling in and reviewing my latest findings. Mind flayers, cultists, and, of course, your esteemed company. <laughs> Why, I'm practically an expert. They've tentacles, you know. Quite shocking. The druid Halson had some kind of mind flare specimen in a jar in his quarters. A replica, no doubt, but truly fascinating to see up close. As a matter of fact, I do. But why do you? That's quite impossible. You'd have undergone ceramorphosis by now. If what you say were true, you'd be a mind flayer by now. You? Infected by a mind flayer? <laughs> Ridiculous. Isn't it? Perhaps that's for the best. I'd be irresponsible not to debunk such a strange claim. If I just peer in your eye, I could quickly... Oh, my dear sweet God! If we managed it, we'd have a specimen of incredible rarity on our hands. I'll need to research the particulars, however. Give me a bit of time, and I'll have this little issue sorted. My condition likes being ignored as little as I do. I must consume another artifact. And soon. Thank you. has any effect. Oh, Mr. have mercy on us all. Listen, I need to speak to you, to all of you. It would be unconscionable of me to remain silent. I might just be about to remedy that. You have to know who I was. You have to know who I really am. What I am is a walking shadow of the promise I once held. I'm what one might call a wizard prodigy from an early age could not only control the weave, but compose it, much like a musician or a poet. Such was my skill that it earned me the attention of the mother of magic herself, the Lady of Mysteries, the goddess Mistra. She revealed herself to me and she became my teacher. In time, she became my muse, and later even my lover. Oh, yes. We enjoyed each other's company, body, mind, and soul. But even so, I desired more. You see, no matter how powerful a wizard we mortals can become, we never scratch more than the surface of the weave. Mistra keeps us in check. There are boundaries she doesn't let us cross. Yet, every time I was with her, I stood on the precipice, gazing into the wonders that lay beyond. I sought to cross her boundaries. I tried to convince her. I pouted. I pleaded. Swore my ambition was only to serve her better. But she only smiled and told me to be contented. But inconceivable as it seems to me now, I shared a bed with a goddess. And yet I wasn't satisfied. So I sought to prove myself worthy to her instead. We come now to the crux of my folly. 
Shall I share the story behind it, or would you rather head straight to its sordid finale? Suffice it to say, I obtained an obscure and ancient book that had locked away inside a much coveted prize. It was a fragment of primal weave locked out of time, locked away from Mistra herself. What if, I thought, what if, after all this time, I could return this lost part of herself to the goddess? I was certain that this deed of raw power, draped in romance, would convince Mistra to take me by the hand and welcome me into her hitherto forbidden domains. I was mistaken. I obtained the fabled book and took it into my study. As for what happened next... Here. Place your hand over my heart. Let me show you. You feel the tadpole quiver as you realize Gale is letting you in, into the dark. You see through Gale's eyes, staring down the corridors of a dread memory. A book bound and suddenly opened. Inside there are no pages, only a swirling mass of blackest weave that pounces. Its teeth, its claws, it's unstoppable as it digs through and becomes part of you. And gods, is it ever hungry. Thankfully, the moment I absorbed the fragment wasn't enough to kill me outright. It was only the beginning. This netherese blight, this orb, for lack of a better word, is balled up inside my chest, and it needs to be fed. As long as I absorb traces of the weave from potent enough sources, it remains quiet. Were it ever to fully destabilize, however. I will erupt. I don't know the exact magnitude of the eruption, but given my studies of Netherese magic, I'd say even a fragment as small as the one I carry, it'd level a city the size of Waterdeep. We might chance upon a king's collection of magical artifacts around the corner. We might cross paths with a miracle round the bend. Then again, we might not. All of this, it must feel like a betrayal. Say the word, and we'll part ways. That is a great relief. Oh, a great relief indeed. You truly are a soul that steals my own. From all my new rallied heart, I thank you. I thank you all. I understand if you stand against me. I'm humbled if you stand with me. Either way, I will do my best not to let you down. I stand at a precipice, but if you do not give up hope, neither shall I. I'll fight. I'll resist as long as I can. Now, even I am tired of the sound of my own voice. Let us venture forth. Yes. Well met. Shah's blessings upon you. refuses both to leave or to allow itself to be used as you desire. The air 
is heavy. Moisture drips down your forehead. Pain shoots through your fingers. The world swims as you close, then reopen your eyes. How long have you been waiting here? A moment? A night? A ten day? Can you feel it crawling through you? Tendrils squirming in your chest, gripping your heart, piercing your belly. Your bones popping, your flesh swelling. I can. I see it in you. I feel it in me. We are lost. I will be quick with my blade. First you, then the others. Then, myself. Your minds intertwine. You sense a touch of uncertainty. A touch of disgust. trust my own mind so it seems I must trust yours I will wait but know this I am watching if the sickness does not pass come dawn I will end us all I came just in time. You are transforming. Yes, you have. I saved you before. And I'm here to save you again. Don't worry. You will not become a Mind Flayer. Not while I'm around. I'll protect you. Independent? Good. We haven't much time, so listen closely. There is great potential within you. It comes from that parasite. Your instinct is to resist the power it gives, but you must accept it. Nurture it. I will keep it from consuming you, but for the sake of both of us, you must learn to wield it. for the fate of Faerun, a fight we are losing, for now. You can change that, but only if you embrace your potential. I have to go. The enemy is closing in. I will be back. Ah, 
my good fellow. Quite the cosy setup you have here. I'll just make myself comfortable. Thank you so much. My research turned up a rather brilliant technique that seems quite actionable. It's not too deep. Just behind the orbital socket. I could attempt an extraction. I've a needle in my tunic, after all. I assure you, I've dreamt of it a thousand times over. Volo carefully holds one of your eyes open and begins to prod uncertainly with the needle. The needle finds the gap between eyeball and socket. Volo frowns and begins to push. Pain shoots through your body as the needle snags on your optic nerve. I think I... The needle seesaws back and forth, plucking the nerve like a harp string. Oh, bother. There's some obstacle in the way. I shall need a more robust implement. Volo carefully withdraws the needle from your eye. Then, reaching into his bag, he produces an ice pick. Volo slowly brings the ice pick closer to your eye. Now, don't move. Cold metal presses against the skin beneath your brow. And then, tap, tap, stab. Do you feel that? Ha! Huh. I think we have the blighter on the run. I agree. It's a feisty critter. Just a little further. Volo tears the pick from your brain with a violent jerk. Your eye plops down into the mud. Threat. He pauses, looks down at your eye, and recoils slightly as it sinks into the mud. to be an amount of cosmetic damage. Please, try not to overexert yourself. You're in a rather fragile state at present. I can't help but feel partly responsible. Perhaps there is something more I can do. Take this. A far superior relic to that old jelly you were chained to. Try it on for size. And, um, it was very nice to have met you. I'm sure you'll sort out your little brain problem one way or another. Far away from here, if you've a heart. Terribly sorry, my friend. Ta.